reporting on the games you love by people who love to game. The MMO Reporter Network. MMO Reporter's PAX Prime coverage is brought to you by GoDaddy. Get 30% off your next purchase at GoDaddy by using the code MMO30. Some limitations apply. See website for details. Oh my God. 
And these are not the mini desktops of old, like netbook, net top kind of things, atom based entry PCs. The technology has changed such that you can get a high performance processor, you can get a Core i7, but at a low enough power that that's a, it can fit in that small form factor. In fact, let me just show you one. You can get one this size, fits in this small form factor, but yet is a high performance PC because it's got a level of integration that hasn't been possible until more recent years. So wireless is integrated, Core i7 processor, Intel Irish Pro graphics, you can get integrated graphics all in one small package. Think gaming on the go. These mini PCs of this cal have grown more than 50% this year is the expectation. And you know where they started actually is in business. Because in businesses they can take these and it's small enough that instead of making a custom embedded device maybe for a point of sale terminal or a retail sign or you know, all different kinds of places, even in soda machines, these things are getting put all over the place. And we see them moving rapidly into consumer space as well. Home theater, PC, gaming on the go, that kind of thing. One of the other areas that is growing is all-in-one PCs. These are gaming, maybe for more casual gaming, or a, a number of different usages, and let me show you that. So, this one, we see portable. Oh, oh, I lost my. I lost my game. No, oh, sorry. It's cool. I'll tell you what it is, but I can't. Oh, oh, oh There it is. There it is. Look oh, quick. You guys know what that is? Risk. 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 Yeah, 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 it's fun. It's um. <laughs> so um. All in ones have really grown rapidly in the consumer desktop space. Many consumers are getting an all in one that's sleek thin, big, high-definition screen, and they replace their desktop, uh, you know, in their office or whatever with that. What we're seeing now, what's interesting and related to the gaming side is, as you put batteries in those, it's a portable all one and then what you can do with it, it's kind of like a giant tablet, you can take a walk around your house and use it that way. It's a PC, full Windows PC. It's a TV. Mine sits on my kitchen countertop and it's there all the time. I can, you know, go find things on the web, watch the news in the background or Netflix or whatever. And it's also a gaming device. When you lay it flat, you saw the Risk game it's playing, you can play games, multiplayer games. Four people can sit around it, more family games and that. There's all kinds of things you can do. And we just announced uh, a couple of months ago a partnership with Hasbro to bring some of Hasbro's most iconic games, Risk, Life, and Scrabble, to the all-in-one PC. So you'll see those coming out in, the, in the Q4 of this year. And then, of course, gaming laptops. More and more performance, lower power, integrated graphics, making them high performance for gaming on the go. So, if that's where we are and that's what's driving PC gaming, where's it going? And by the way, in just a few minutes, I'm going to bring out some guests to three guests that I'll talk with about where their perspective is and what they're developing in both hardware and software that are really point to where the future of gaming is going. But they'll come out in just a minute. But I think there's three elements to this. The first one I would call the innovation spiral. And this is what's driven PC gaming for years and years and years. And it's, that, it's what I talked before, it's that innovation spiral of more hardware performance, more software performance, and it keeps going and increasing and increasing and increasing due to the insatiable demand by gamers, in a lot of me, for more and better and more immersive games, richer experiences. And that will continue. New technologies like DX12 that Microsoft announced back in March will bring even more capability to the platform, and you'll see all kinds of great features come out from that. Second area, gaming anywhere. Whether it's that rich notebook with lots of performance I talked about on the prior slide, all-in-ones for the gaming that you can do that way, bring it around the house, the little gaming mini box I showed you. This is changing how people do gaming. Can you, you know, land parties, take your gaming on the go. And the other key one here is Steambox, bringing gaming out of the back room and 
it into the living room using any screen in your house, using your TV and getting that great 10-foot experience, bringing gaming anywhere in the house, and then on the go with these other devices. And then finally, gaming will get increasingly more immersive. It has been for some number of years, but with the advent of 4K displays, as they come down in price and get more and more affordable, this great, crisp, clear picture for the game with 4K displays. But the one I think that is probably one of the biggest game changers, virtual reality. How many of you have tried Oculus Rift? <laughs> Fantastic. This is the only place I can say that and get that many hands to be raised. <laughs> so, yep. So, yeah. Oculus Rift. So, this, so I tried it too. I tried it about probably nine months ago. It was an early, earlier version. Fantastic. So this idea of being completely immersed, stepping into that virtual world of that game, and when it's all around you, you look forward. When your head turns left, you see what's to the left. You see what's to the right. You look up, and you see the sky, and you're down, and you see the road. What an unbelievable experience. And I think PC gaming will lead us into virtual reality, but it won't be the only place it goes. And it demands incredible amounts of performance. You really need a Core i7 processor, which we love, of course, to power this kind of thing. Well, let me stretch your imagination to other things that you can imagine in virtual reality. Although, as I said, PC gaming will lead it. You could travel anywhere in the world and be walking down the streets of Rome. Now, maybe you should get off the couch and go see it, but nevertheless, you can do it if you want to. And you maybe think that's a silly example, but what about a business example? Let's say you're going to need to buy a new house. You have to move. You have to move across the country to New York. You can fly, go with a realtor, drive around, see a bunch of houses, sit in traffic, takes a week, really expensive, and then you may have to go out again. Can you imagine if you could just be there? sitting on your couch and go through all of that. Can you imagine the different scenarios where this could really change how we interact, social interactions, that kind of thing. So I think it's this incredible technology. We're really, really excited about it. And great is going to be first, I think, and foremost in PC gaming. All right. <laughs> Let me talk for a minute about Intel's commitment to gaming. One year ago, if you would have looked in, at the Intel desktop microprocessor roadmap, of the four items you see on this slide, only one of them would have been there. That's all we had. Since that time, we've added three more products. We're building out a much better portfolio of products. Because frankly speaking, we know that while the gaming community loved Sandy Bridge, that's our processor from a few years ago, We've really been frustrating our most loyal customer base. We haven't given the performance that gamers were looking for. And we said, we're going to change it and we're going to start as quickly as we possibly can. So we challenged our engineering team and they really stepped up. Because frankly, I challenged them that we already launched our Haswell processor. That was June of last year. And there were OEM systems out with it. I said, OK, let's crank up the, the uh, capability of this system. But you can't change the system or the motherboards because the OEMs don't have time. You can't change the thermal envelope or the power envelope or any of that. It's got all fit in that same socket too, by the way, but give us some more performance. <laughs> and they said, if we could have done that, we would have done it in the first place. But, but they took the challenge, and in six months' time, we did have this conversation in January by Computex, we launched the one I'm the most proud of here, I think, which is Devil's Canyon, because of how quickly the engineering team responded. We spun the package, got more power into it without increasing the power envelope of the system, changed the uh, thermal interface material to handle that power and cool it, and cranked it up for Intel's first ever four gigahertz, four core product, had the gamers at Intel vote on a cool name, so we called it Devil's Canyon to have some fun with it out with you guys. And then, and as I said, launched it, and it did far, it so far beyond our expectations. So not only did we respond to you, the customer, and what you wanted, but we got a great response back that proved to us 
The gaming community loves as much performance as they can get. So we brought that out. We unlocked Pentium based on customer requests. We brought Irish Pro Graphics, so some of Intel's uh, richest and best technology in our integrated graphics. We're bringing that to desktop. That will come with Intel's fifth generation core processor, codenamed Broadwell, so that'll come out later. And then finally, which brings me to what we're introducing today, which is Intel's first eight core microprocessor, our newest Extreme Edition, Core i7, our Haswell Extreme Edition processor. And this delivers performance. When you look at multi-threaded workloads, and think about if you're doing even in multitasking as well, so whether it's multi-threaded workloads like video transcoding, content creation, video editing, things like that, or if you're multitasking, you're running a game on one screen, you're streaming it and you're seeing that on another screen, and maybe, and maybe you're video encoding in the back if you're just really an overachiever. So you've got lots of things going on. <laughs> And it can handle it. And in fact, if you look at compared to our current four-core product, Devil's Canyon, the one I said I was so proud of, for multi-threading workloads, this will outperform it by 79%. It takes advantage of those cores. And if you compare it to the prior generation Extreme Edition, it's up to 34% faster. So more performance, more capability. And that's just the processor. We also are announcing today a new chipset, the X99 chipset. And it's really all about more and faster I.O. So whether that's on SATA, on the prior generation we had six SATA ports total, two of which were six gig. Now we have 10, all of them six gig. Wow. And for USB, we had 14 ports on the old one, same number for the new one, except six of those are USB 3.0. So, more ports, capitals. All right. If you look over the time Intel has come out with these extreme edition high-end microprocessors, we came out with the first one in about 2003, and in that little bit over 10 years, this one is 40x the performance of that first one. So driving that software spiral that makes all those games play so much better. Okay, but we announced it today. So what do people think? So we pulled off some of the first press quotes to share them with you here, and we, we love them, you know. And your product is compared to a dinosaur that can be good or bad. In this case, I think it's good. Uh, awesome power, majestic. I don't know what this chicka wow wow thing is, but people tell me it's really, really, really great. But the thing I know you're going to love the most is this. So all the third parties and all the guys out there that are benchmarking, the results are starting to come in. Just launched this morning, but the results are starting to come in. And what we're seeing from the, the third parties doing this is it's overclocking at about four and a half gig. Base frequency is three. It's 50% higher than base. Now, for those of you that don't, let me remind you, on the prior gen, Ivy Bridge, it was about 25% above base. Base was higher, but it was 25%. So we're getting, I think, some of these results because people are loving what they're seeing on overclocking. And we designed the processor to not only have a lot of performance, but when you want to overclock, really bring out that performance. So the new uh, Core i7 processor. All right, great. So what I'd like to do now is introduce you to some of the guests that I brought. And, the first, and so what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about hardware and we're going to talk a little bit about software. And so, so 
since I just told you about the processor, why don't we start with hardware? So I'd like to bring out Frank Azor, uh, GM of Alienware. Frank. Pretty exciting product to introduce to you guys today. But first of all, is everyone having a good time at PAX? Yeah. I love this show. I mean, this is never a boring moment. Great games, <laughs> great costumes, great people. This is my favorite show to go to around the world. Um, but before we get to the really, really cool stuff, I'm going to bore you with about an hour worth of slides. So. <laughs> We're going to get to it really quick. I just wanted to just touch on a couple things about Alienware. So we've been doing this now for about two decades. Um, hard to believe it, but in 96 is when we actually started building what we call the ultimate gaming systems. And we've had a lot of firsts over the years. Um, we were the first ones to ship liquid-cooled desktops. We practically invented the gaming notebook. We were the first person to, or first company to ever put two graphics cards inside a notebook. Um, and then more recently, we, we entered the console race and uh, introduced the Alienware Alpha Gaming Console, um, which is now available for pre-order, starting at 5.49. Just have to plug that in. <laughs> so uh, check that out at Alienware.com. Um, <laughs> now that I got all that past, we're going to show you the really cool stuff. So there's been throughout that whole history, there's always been one system that has been. Um, pretty much the flagship, the staple of what Alienware stood for over the years. And that is the Area 51. Um, Area 51 is our flagship. It is the highest performance gaming system. It's the best of the best. So what we're going to do today is we're going to introduce you to the latest generation of Area 51. And before we do that, we're going to tease it with a little video. I promise it will be short, and then we'll show you the product immediately. Thumb drive, or you're going to plug in your headset or something in the front. 
Uh, what do we do? We kind of contort our bodies and do one of these kind of things and start uh, trying to plug that in. And it's just not an ideal experience. Fortunately, we don't have to do it that often, hopefully. So we kind of just deal with the headaches because the performance is what we want and that's really what matters the most. So we've said to ourselves, all right, this is how everybody's struggling with these systems. Let's go solve these problems. And that's why we developed the Triangle. So think about how you use your desktop. This is sitting on the floor next to your desk. All the ports now are facing you. You have your optical drive, you have your USB uh, ports, you have your um, headphone and microphone jack, we even have an SD card slot there. Everything's just facing you. You can find everything real simply and real easily. Then when it's time to plug something in the back, this handle's integrated into the chassis. You just tilt it forward, you plug everything into the back, and you tilt it back. When you tilt it back, you don't have to worry about all the cables hitting the back wall and pinching your cables or messing them up or, or, or you know, screwing with your ports and everything in the back. And the heat is all fresh air is brought in through the front of the chassis and exhausted out the rear and away from the chassis. In the typical cube chassis, you have that hitting the back of the wall, all the hot air is getting trapped back there. Um, it's just really, we've gotten used to that design because it's what we've seen over the last 30 years, but in reality it doesn't make the most sense. So, with that, I introduce you to the Alienware Area 51. Um, we are... Thank you. or check out anywhere.com to find all the information on the website as well and it goes on sale in October. Thank you very much.
for uh, the X99 chipset. So from a breadth of motherboard manufacturers, again, you can go see a lot of these folks on the show floor. Lots and lots, so you can see the number of the vendors there, all the ones that you, uh, that you know, and they've put some great innovation into this. You're going to be able to build and really overclock and get some great results out of these new X99 motors. All right, now with that, we've talked a lot about hardware, but I know what you guys are really interested in. It's the games that you play, and it's the software. So, let's talk about software, and to kick us off, let's roll this video, please. Hi, I'm Chris Ross, I'm the CEO. Set in space. It's both a single player narrative like Wing Commander, which was a game I'm quite uh, well known for uh, back in the 90s, and then it's also a huge open sandbox that thousands, millions of other people can adventure around, go from planets, they can trade, they can be bounty hunters, they can be merchants, they can be mercenaries, they can be pirates, you can essentially sort of take any role professional you want. Travel between planets, you know, earn money, upgrade your ship, get into fights, explore, find new areas. It's the adventure that I've always wanted to, to play ever since I saw Star Wars many years ago. In October of 2012, I launched a crowdfunding campaign for Star Citizen and initially reached out to sort of some of the old fans of my old games, Wing Commander, Privateer, Freelancer, and uh, you know, that went uh, incredibly well. We sold all sorts of records, which is amazing because we're making the game completely independently completely funded by gamers out there that want to see this kind of game and so it's allowing us to have a pure focus and vision of making the best space sim that we possibly can and so uh, that's great. Thank you to everyone out there for uh, funding us. We're pretty focused on uh, any technology that we can use to increase the immersion so 3D is one of them, you know, out of the box our engine will support 3D stereoscopic on a monitor which is pretty cool or if you're wearing a headset like the Oculus Rift, it's pretty cool sitting in the cockpit looking around while you're flying. So all those are elements that we want to push to increase the immersion uh, because you know, that again, the spirit of creating a PC game is that you really sort of embrace all these peripherals and new technologies that you wouldn't potentially see on a lot of other platforms. Reasons why I like the PC world is because it is always changing, it's always evolving, it's always challenging, there's always new things to do, there's always a new graphics card or a new processor or a new peripheral like the Oculus Rift that allows you to sort of do something in gaming that you couldn't do before. And uh, for me, that's kind of uh, the core of Star Citizen. It's an online game, we're going to constantly feel great and passionate. So even though we release the you know, final public release, that's not the end of the story, that's the beginning of the story. It's going to keep on going, we're going to keep on upgrading, adding more functionality, adding more content, changing uh, the rendering out. If you know we have more powerful GPUs, we'll be taking advantage of that. And that is the beauty of an online game, it's an evolution. If you take a look at some other online games out there, like the World of Warcraft or EVE Online, if you look at the original game that was released and what the game is now, they've changed greatly over the 10 years they've been out. And that will be no different than Star Citizen. So for me, Star Citizen will always aim to be the game that's on the forefront of PC technology. I think everyone knows that uh, my games in general have always been trying to 
push what you can do with the technology, and that's the coolest thing about the PC world is it never stops. It's always every year there's a new processor, or there's a new GPU, or there's a new peripheral like Oculus Rift or something that you can really create a new experience for. And so the fact that like the eight core now, I mean I've got the extra core on my desktop now I'm going to have an eight core. Um, you know we're really trying to increase the multi-threaded ability of like in Star Citizen, basically we're going to try and have more physics threads, more rendering threads, more animation threads, more AI threads, and so having more cores definitely um, will help. I'm hoping I'm going to get a few free Haswells from the manifest. <laughs> company as big as Intel sort of coming back and focusing back on PC gaming and sort of, because for me I think that PC gaming is what drives a lot of the technology, like on the motherboards, on the graphics, because it's basically, everyone out here, I think, I mean, pretty much is always wanting to have like the coolest, fastest, newest thing, and so that's not necessarily what a, someone that's doing word processing wants. So they only <laughs> change it when they have to have the machine breaks down here. I that's where they're either I, I run into people all the time. I mean, uh, there's, uh, there was a, a star citizen back there that I was hanging out with a bit earlier, and he said, oh, I just got my new machine that's got two you know, Titan Zs in SLR. And uh, I, I hope I can be running everything in 4K. I said, yeah, I think that'll work perfectly. <laughs> uh, so yeah, no, so I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm really uh, happy and excited to sort of see the new focus on uh, PC gaming and uh, on the Star Citizen side, I can still make a promise that we'll always be trying to use whatever the coolest, newest, fastest thing to push the level of immersion and graphical fidelity that we can in the world. And I don't know if how many you know, there's some Star Citizen backers here. <laughs> Thank you guys, I really appreciate it. You're allowing us to make we're allowing us to make this game in a way that we don't have to compromise. We, we don't have a publisher, we, you know, we don't have investors. We just have you guys that are on the best possible game and we want to make the best possible game. So that's much appreciated. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know what else to say other than I, we're showing uh, the game. We actually have an early version of the release V0.9 of the Logitech booth. So if you're on the show floor, you can go by the Logitech booth. I think we're also showing it daily in my booth on a curved screen that I'm told is pretty cool. So I'm going to go check that out. And, uh, I don't know. Fantastic. Some of the gaming that was happening, even on high-end PC and consoles, it was starting to become a little bit di difficult to differentiate one generation from the next. You know, you might look at the Xbox One and compare it to an Xbox 360 game and say, yeah, it looks better, but, but to, you know, is it actually that much better? It's hard to tell for a normal consumer. Virtual reality resets that entirely because all of a sudden, the, the sort of computational requirements for delivering a high-end virtual reality experience are off the charts. <laughs> we have uh, the highest end hardware that we can 
get our hands on the latest Oculus Rift development kits. Uh, worked best, obviously, with high-end PC stuff. The early experimentation up to the latest development kits, it's all PC-based uh, because that's where the most powerful tool sets are and, uh, and that's where the most cutting-edge players are as well. When people first experience this, uh, they're going to kind of have this thought going into it like, okay, it's a platform in VR, I'm not sure what to expect. But when they see it, it just brings back this magic into the experience of playing games that, that none of us have had uh, for a while. And I don't think people are going to ever want to go back to playing a platforming game any other way once they've experienced what Lucky Scale can bring into the genre. So this is the most exciting time uh, that I think has ever happened in game development. We haven't been through a change this big and something this exciting pretty much since we started making games. And the innovation that's happening right now uh, is, is kind of the fastest rate that it's ever been. experienced the rift. Yeah. Uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, I visited a guy by the name of Palmer Lucky. I think some of you guys know who he is. Uh, I went to his office with a couple of folks that I've been making games with for a long time. And uh, I walked up to his desk, it's covered in soldering irons and 3D printers and all sorts of crazy stuff. And he handed me this, uh, this duct tape put together thing that looked like if I didn't hold it the right way, it was going to totally fall apart. And I put it up to my face, and I looked into a brand new world, something I'd never seen before. You guys and I, we share, we share this dream, I think for many years now. We, we've probably, you know, we've been watching sci-fi movies, The Matrix, whatever it is, and we've been dreaming in our head, you know, someday, maybe before I die, I might be able to experience something that even approaches how incredible I think gaming can be in the future. I had no idea that I'd be standing here or that we would be uh, on the precipice of this incredible change that's about to happen in gaming. For the folks, for you guys that have experienced it, um, you kind of have an idea of, of what I'm talking about. For the folks that haven't yet, people can try to describe to you this experience. You can, you can uh, you know, see it on the screen, you can read an article. It doesn't really prepare you for how, um, for how much that dream is here today, finally. And, uh, and I, I invite you guys to come by the Oculus booth where we're showing off Lucky's Tale. There's a bunch of amazing other VR software there. I will tell you, though, that we are just on the verge of this. We're just getting started. Um, and that, that sort of dream that we've had uh, for, the, for however many years of what gaming can be is finally here today. Fantastic. Paul, thank you so much. or so, this incredible, huge, and growing PC gaming environment has an incredibly bright future. We just see it continuing to grow for all the reasons that we talked about. This great, open, scalable platform that just gets more and more performance that great and talented software vendors take advantage of and deliver even better games to you, and the spiral goes on, that you're going to increasingly be able to compute anywhere, game anywhere, anytime. Whether, take it, not only gaming in the den or the bedroom or wherever it is, but in the living room, or in the steam box, on the road, on the go, at land parties, high performance notebooks and mini desktops, all in one. There's lots of great new hardware coming and here today that gives you anytime computing. And then finally, and a lot of what we talked about here at the end was around that immersive experience and how virtual reality is really going to change the way that people play PC games. I hope you saw that Intel is very committed to PC gaming. We've changed our roadmap, we've added new products, we've heard your feedback and brought some of Intel's best technology to bear and invented some new things. 
to bring forward even better products for you, including the product we launched today, which is our first 8-core microprocessor. And with that, I encourage you to go to the Intel booth, go see some of this great hardware, this software. You can do, try Oculus Rift if you haven't tried it yet. Try the games. And I think the future of PC gaming is incredibly bright, and I'm very excited to be a part of it. Thank you very much.